man, I'm excited. What a way to start the day. Craig Fuller on site. Big announcement. Next event. Maybe virtual. It might be virtual. We'll see what happens. I mean, this has been great. It's been a great experiment. Yeah, you know, right? Craig I mean, may uh, not have had my vote during the great debate or the audience vote, <laughs> but he has my vote for the next conference being virtual for sure. I, I loved it. I, I think it's great. It's a great format. Everybody gets to interact. We were talking about this before. You get to, you can see all the content and be instantly interacting and connecting and networking with people all at the same time and find out what their reactions are real time. Yeah, it's we want to hear from you. These events are nothing without the audience to hear and discuss this content. The networks that remain after and the deals that partners close. So we welcome your feedback on the Slack channel and in the surveys that we'll be sending out. Yeah. So, yeah, like you said, a lot happened today and there's a lot more that's coming. But uh, let's first let's uh, let's thank our sponsors. Yeah, sure. At truckstop.com. We're in it for the long haul. Our marketplace drive the success of the entire freight industry by giving carriers and brokers an efficient way to collaborate with access to trusted partners and the right tools. The road to success is wide open. Truckstop.com. Let's move, Michael. Truckstop.com. Let's do it. Let's yeah, get through this yeah. one. Up. Right. So, <laughs> so we had uh, Brooke Sutherland and and uh, and George Abernathy, yeah. right? Uh, Brooke Sutherland, uh, industrial and M&A columnist, Bloomberg, right? Ways in which the coronavirus reset what we do, and she resurrected the debate, the debate quite strongly between between just in time and uh, just in case. You know, yeah, the, 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 she the, did. We thought that was settled yesterday. They said in the comments uh, that that was. They said in the comment section, Jordan Graft had settled that one, but then it was it was re, it was renewed. Yeah, she really did, saying it's just in time will never go away. There'll be some form, but there'll be some form of of just in case that's going to be needed. So central depositories of essential, even demanded by investors to go to move forward. So. Okay, the, interesting. The, the big moment of the morning. Now, there were some great debates. There were some great sessions. But the <laughs> big moment was the great debate, right? Yeah, Our volume's was. on the up. It was between Freightways founder and CEO Craig Fuller. He went against market expert analyst Zach Strickland, George Abernathy. He presided over the affair. Zach, for a moment there, he seemed like he was on his heels as he tried to swim up he- uphill against the data in Sonar. You could tell he was losing ground a little yeah. bit when he had to start talking about nail salons in a barber shop to Craig. <laughs> then George accused Zach of using a flow bee attached to a Roomba to cut his hair. There was blood on the canvas. There, there was. I was expecting a whistle to go off for a low blow when Zach pulled out the nail salon and the haircuts and everything like that. But. You know, some of the people in the comments had some great things to say. Matt McLean said, Matt McLean said without data, you're just another person with an opinion. Sonar 6.0. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then Christopher Thornton, I want Craig to be right, but Zach is. Uh, Jordan Kidd, IT and data analyst at Freightworks. He was Team Fuller has a slight advantage from the fundamental standpoint, but Team Strickland has done deeper analysis and is doing a great job defending his turf. Yeah, absolutely. He, yeah, he did. And Jason Eckert is out there. He's, he wants people to respond. To us. D- Team Fuller predicts carriers will fall out in the first half of 2020, and those who can sustain will benefit in Q3, Q4. What yeah. do you think? But you know what? Zach Strickland, he know. turned the tide. He won 70% to 30%, <laughs> and I think a lot of that had to do is that I think that Zach was saying a sentiment and opinion that the audience really had to share. It's really shared that it's going to take a little bit longer to this road to recovery. So Craig had to do a little bit more work uphill rolling that ball to convince everyone of the optimism. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Zach, ultimately, Zach was able to convince the crowd that Craig was pie in the sky and he was the more realistic, being uh, cautiously optimistic in the, in the hurdles we're going to face. So that, that was the turning point. You know, one of the other things that I thought was really cool was Don Burnett, CEO of Kodiak Robotics, Linda Baker, reporter from Freightways, talked to him in a session about 30 minutes ago, and she asked him the tough questions too. Kodiak, they had gone through a round of COVID-related layoffs like many businesses have, and I really appreciated Don addressing that. Yeah, he really did, and that was an inter- that was a very interesting one as well. Say, you know, he kind of echoed what we've heard before. Long haul is where we're going to see the application first. It's the obvious one, right? Yeah. And then uh, coming up next, right after this commercial break, so stay tuned, Lance Healy, Chief Innovation Officer, Co-Founder, Banyan Technologies, and we hear a wonderful harmonica player will be coming on stage, or will be having via Skype to join us. Stay tuned to this channel. We'll be right back after the break. Another group of wonderful ads that they just played on there. (laughs) You're right. You know, when we usually do those, we don't have the ads playing, so we don't get a little break. We don't get a chance to reset, a chance to to talk a little bit behind the scenes. I'm really digging it. Speaking of, it (laughs) It gives us a chance to check the comments, too. Whitney Moneyer, she says, loving the jacket today, Dooner. 
War just for you. John Piper, and he says, Dooner, Michael Vincent, I love the live interaction with others in, in, in the industry. I've not seen this in a while, and real-time feedback has been phenomenal. Awesome. Matt Beckham said, it's been an incredibly productive event. So happy to hear all of that from all you guys. Now we have a guest coming up. Who do we got, Vincent? We've got Lance Healy, Chief Innovation Officer, co-founder at Banyan Technologies from my uh, hometown in beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, wow. Cleveland, yeah, Ohio. Baby. So. Lance, are you there with us, man? How are you? Hey, man, really appreciate the opportunity to be on the show with you guys. No, I love it. Yeah, great. We, we have uh, we have a little we have a little bit of deep insight into you into your your background here. I know that you've been a drummer and you play harmonica in a in a what you call an old man rock band. That's Can right. you give us a lick? Yeah. <laughs> well, Come most on, people. A... Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Feeling a little yeah, blues traveler yeah, right now. People... Most people hear me at a bar at a trade show, like late at night. So that's my bar. This is as close as I can get. So that's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> that is well, awesome. Someone who likes to, uh, to to make a lot of noise. There we go. We got you, the cowbell. You guys can we jam. Maybe I'll bring in my guitar next time we have you on, Lance, and we'll we'll jam a little there bit. <laughs> but Lance, really, for yeah. those who don't know Banya, can you give us a quick intro about the company, what you guys are all about? Yeah, absolutely. Now, appreciate it. So, uh, so we basically we pioneered uh, doing direct LTL API connections way back in the '90s. Um, so, in the long, long ago, uh, before most people could spell APIs. Um, so that's what we did for you know years and years. We we serviced shippers, 3PLs, um, other technology companies. Um, so we're back end for companies like Landstar and XPO and Trinity and really good top quality folks. So um, that's primarily what we get into. Um, and uh, geez, we've been doing this for about 20 years now. We're, we're getting pretty good at it. Um, uh, that's what keeps the lights on for us. Hey, unless you deal with LTL, and, and I have, and Vincent, you oh, have, yeah. it's one of those things you don't think about. Many you years. don't realize how nuanced it is with, with weight classes and, and DIMS and all of those things. I remember even getting quotes on it was annoying because it, it seemed like the same people have to go back and get DIMS from every single time. It's like, yeah, don't you yeah, remember your going, job? Going and teaching yeah, the NMFC. Again. Yes. <laughs> you Anticipate me is? coming. <laughs> yeah, but exactly you work right. in that space. You've done a lot of tech advancements in LTL, so tell us a little bit about them and what's new. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been pretty huge. Um, so now you know API connections to carriers. Everybody's kind of doing it. It's it frees up so much in terms of annual uh, annual negotiations, rate negotiations, all that kind of stuff. Now people are negotiating, uh, working with the carriers instead of doing annual RFPs. They're 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 massaging their rates every week, every month, um, sometimes every quarter. Uh, but pricing has become so much more agile. So it's better for the carriers. Their networks are always changing. It's better for the customers. So since uh, about 2012, uh, anybody with a 15-year-old nephew can, can do an API connection, right? So they got that figured out. Okay, cool. So we said, hey, let's, let's go add some more value to this. So what we did is we spun it on its head a little bit, and we enabled the carriers uh, to be able to offer live lane specials um, direct based on a customer's contract. So every shipper that uh, is doing API connections, uh, they have that backstop that my price will never go above this, but my the carriers are able to offer specials based on where they want to grow, where they want to capture lanes, and they can do that in real time right into the digital ecosystem of uh, TMS, the TMS world, the TMS sphere, if you will. So first time that's happening, we just introduced it last year. Um, right now it's showing about 18.5% um, savings on an LTL spend. That's, that's real money. So it's been fun. It's that, been that, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I got to imagine that's really popular with the, with, with the carriers being able to look at their freight mix and then change the, the pricing dynamics based on lane and, and class of freight, freight mix to really tweak their cube utilization and their, and their rate structure, et cetera. Uh, high, high optimism from them, I would imagine, right? Oh, yeah, it's, it's huge. And, and, and the idea is it's a win-win for everybody, right? So the carriers can be agile in their networks and their pricing without having to change a contract. So they can they can go after stuff when and where they want it, and the win for the shippers and the three PLs is they're getting better than contracted pricing. It's awesome. 
How has COVID-19 changed how you guys operate and how you're seeing the LTL market operate? Yeah, so it's a great question. So uh, LTL has been down pretty much across the board around 20%. We've seen it across all of our customer base. Um, we've got about 48,000 client locations used in our technology. The, um, and it's been pretty consistent what we've seen from the carriers as well. Um, the that it's leveled off. We're tracking now. We're tracking transactions every day. It's leveled off, and it's starting to climb back up really, really slowly. When we look, you know, week over week, uh, just comparing it to other days. So it's starting to climb back up. I heard you. I heard you say. What about what about spot market volume mm-hmm. contract? You know, we saw some LTL earnings mm-hmm. and stuff, and they were definitely affected. Uh, by that 20%, like you said, dropping out. And it was, uh, but specific uh, LTL commodities kept coming. So the product mix or the freight flow mix uh, or freight mix on those trailers and the lanes was highly affected, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been like, it's been really feast or famine. So we've got folks that are, you know, in the automotive supply. Well, they're basically shut down and, uh, you know, trickling freight in. And then we've got, you know, groceries, food service, um, you know, obviously medical equipment and some of the staples. They're just, they're like a rocket on fire. So, um, yeah, it's it's been a tale of two two cities. I mean, completely. You've, you've seen it in some of your reports on the truckload side, too. I mean, it's it's all over the place. Hey, we had that great debate. Speaking of the market, it was the bull versus the bear, Craig Fuller versus Zach Strickland. I don't know if you caught it. I don't know if you voted, but which direction are you going in the market? I, I went with the bear. I mean, I got to go with the bear. Uh, I, yeah, I saw it. I'm like, I'm a data junkie. So, yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one person commented on, on the Slack channel here that sometimes the bear eats the bull. <laughs> yeah. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Um, was it Bear Bryant that when you get up and dance with the bear, you can't sit down when you're tired? Is that was that Lombardi? I think or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I'm I'm cautiously optimist uh, optimistic of, of what's going on. I'm with Zach on the on the. Fight. Hey, what's next for you guys? Yeah, so you know, we 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 get bored really easily. So we're um, so we're opening up a whole new section for carriers now that gives them insights into um, pricing and 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 how they're interacting and in relative positioning to uh, to to their competitors. Um, not only that, but in API performance, all kinds of other things. So giving the carriers better data again, it's anonymized and and that kind of thing, but it's uh, it's giving them better data to make better decisions because now they have the tools to go after the freight they want. Now they just need that, that to know where their targets are. So we're just introducing that now. That is going to be really exciting, um, and it should benefit everybody, just moving the industry forward with tech. That's what it's all about. Nice. Lance, really good to hear from you again. It's been a while since we, we spoke and really Thanks, good man. insights and in talking about LTL because truckload and LTL are interrelated, although they couldn't be two more different animals. But uh, so where do people go to learn more about what you're doing there at Banyan? Yeah, I mean, definitely come check out BanyanTechnology.com. Um, you know, we, we love just... We love LTL, so even if it's just looking at what technology do you use, how do we do it, we're a piece of the puzzle. But my, you know, our whole philosophy is if we can help as many more people advance what their objectives are, then everybody wins. Lance, play yourself out with one more lick on that harmonica. Rock on, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Love it, man. Love, love it. I don't, I don't most session. pay money to see that. <laughs> Great stuff. Hey, People th- have. Mario uh, Pawlowski, he says, uh, hello, Timothy. How are you, my man? It was great seeing Mario back in Chicago. Great seeing him again virtually in this Slack channel. If you're not on the Slack channel, what are you doing with your life? I've been yeah, saying this every you day. Get on it, man. But here's the good news. <laughs> this Slack channel is going to remain open. So after this event ends, the Slack channel doesn't. This is your community. We'll be back with our next interview after this commercial break. Welcome back to Battle Station What the Truck. I'm Dooner here with the dude, Michael Vincent. We are getting through five interviews during this session here. We're going to rapid fire through and get answers on the market for all of you. I'm super excited about our next guest. I met him for the first time down in Chicago at Freightways Live there. It's Stephen Budin. 
Boom, boom. Okay, okay, let me help you out here. <laughs> Steven Bin Butel. Bin Butel, director of portfolio yeah. strategy at truckstop.com, former coyote. Great guest, one of my favorite guests at What the Truck in Chicago. Thanks so much for joining us today, Steven. Thank you for having me, gentlemen. I appreciate it. It's good to uh, digitally be with you. <laughs> and as I understand it, you two have some history together. You and Michael here. We've got a little history. Yeah, he, I was, I was the, I was the persistent guy beating him over the head. Hey, you got to listen to freight waves. You got to, you got to. Let me call. Let's talk about. Let's talk about sonar for month, month, month. And then he, and then he, he grabbed on. So yeah, uh, bit, he's been at our conference since the very first one. Exciting stuff, Stephen. Introduce true? yourself. Introduce yourself real quick to the audience who uh, may unfortunately be unfamiliar with you. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't know how unfortunate they are, but uh, I'm Stephen Bimboidel. I'm the director of portfolio strategy uh, at Truckstop.com. I have been in the industry, gosh, uh, probably like six years now. I've uh, been involved with freight waves, and and you find gentlemen, Tim, a little bit less with you, but with Michael and and the rest of the team there, uh, really since right after inception. So going on about four years now. Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome. So Stephen, what, what are you uh, seeing in the overall economic conditions right now? How uh, impacting of the supply chains? Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm breaking any news to anybody that it's, it's pretty ugly. <laughs> um, it, I think what is, have, has been most interesting and, perplexing and uh, a new challenge that we we don't really have uh, really anything to go off of or to compare to or to you know try to benchmark um, is just the how rapidly uh, this decline has happened, how widespread it is um, in terms of industries impacted uh, you know not only here domestically but also countries impacted globally. Right. And it's it's not something, you know, why while all of these types of um, disasters and emergency situations, um, they require our special responses and and all these certain things. This isn't like a hurricane. Right. Where it's it's localized. Uh, it is just an immediate impact that is understandable and quantifiable. Um, this is different, and it's hitting people in different stages, and you're seeing other parts of the world reopen and, and others lagging behind. So it is just there's so many different moving parts that make it uh, impossibly complicated, and uh, pretty much all of those have an impact on freight markets here and, and globally. Yeah, truckstop.com, they have a unique viewpoint of this whole market, especially being where you're positioned. What are some of the insights that, sh that you guys have gleaned from this whole situation over the past, I guess it's been about two months now? Yeah, um, so we, we are very fortunate, one, in um, uh, the, the breadth uh, of the data and the data sources that we have. And so, you know, we have a myriad of products uh, ranging and really have, uh, in, in my opinion, one of the best views of the spot market conditions, um, which, you know, can uh, really give you uh, a first glance and glimmer of what is going on uh, with rates. Um, and we also have all these other sources of data, too, right, from our, our ITS dispatch product, our, our pay and factoring. So we're able to get a more comprehensive um, view of the market than I think some folks are. I um, mean, really, uh, what what we're seeing is that we're in uncharted territory. Uh, Truck Stop also has a lot of depth of data being around. This is our uh, 25th year now, um, and it's it's really really unlike anything we've seen before. Uh, we saw the market we believe in uh, Paris and uh, Paris Cole, our CEO, and Craig Fuller uh, spoke about this. I believe it was yesterday or two days ago. Um, we, we believe we bottomed out, um, in terms of sort of volume rates. And, and we know that, uh, rates will, uh, proceed, or I'm sorry, volume will proceed rates, um, in terms of uptick. Uh, but something that was really interesting that I, I haven't been able to fully explain yet is, uh, one of our data scientists, a gentleman named Kobe found that, uh, the, the bottom of 09, when, which was the last time, you know, over a decade ago that we, we saw the Trucks Up Market Demand Index, or what we call MDI. The last time we saw levels this low, it was the exact same week of the year uh, in 2009 as it was in 2020. And we're, we're looking into some other things around that. But that was one that was just kind of a head scratcher. You know, I realized there's, there's only 52, but it was just very interesting that these bottoms are hitting on the exact same week.
That is interesting, Stephen. But it, it sounds like it's kind of spurious, right? The correlation there between the two, because you know, as you were saying, this is unlike anything else we've seen before, and a, even hurricane, et, et cetera. And and things are coming back online in and shutting down, uh, not in tandem. Everything's fragmented, right? So going back and, and using historical data to see how the cycle's going to play out is unlike an an economic cycle downturn and, and and tick up. So, you know, talk to real time data, right? Well, how do you how do you see what's going on to take advantage of those hurdles and opportunities that are that are going on as we climb our way out of this uh, depth. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, you're absolutely right. And just look at it. Uh, since 1915, the average amount of uh, days it took the overall market, the stock market to go from sort of peak to bear territory, uh, it was 255 days on average. Uh, this time around, the Dow was 28 days, so less than a month. So it has been unlike anything else in rapid deterioration. Um, as far as, you know, how how we're sort of trying to internalize and and use the information, the data that we have. Uh, one, we are doing our absolute best uh, to generate, you know, whether it's content uh, and working with you guys, which um, I'll get to here in a second. Um, but we are trying to provide all of the tools and information that we can uh, to allow brokers and carriers um, to make the best business decisions for them. Um, and what I the for them part is important, right? Because uh, it's obviously highly fragmented on both sides. Everybody's operations are different. If you know, some people are in specialized in different niches. There's different modes in these things. Um, and we also understand that uh, we want to keep that control and that ownership of decisions and uh, how you're processing information in the people who should have it. And that again is is we believe the brokers and the carriers. So. We do things like uh, allowing them to input their own uh, custom sort of weightings and variable scales uh, within the data. Um, but really, we are just trying to feed them all the information possible um, and then get out of their way and let them go. Steven, super insightful stuff. How do, I mean, the website's obvious, truckstop.com, but how do people have a deeper conversation with you and learn more? This is a networking event. This is a conference. Love to send some people your way, too. Yes, absolutely. Uh, feel free. You can absolutely reach out to me uh, via LinkedIn or uh, my uh, email is just first name, last name at truckstop.com. Good luck spelling it. Uh, maybe we can send that out for them. Um, but we also have a really an amazing marketing and PR team. Um, so Matt Stubbs, uh, Bess Lauer, and we just hired a, a wonderful new CMO named Brad Bedell. Um, we have a great team, and, and we would love to continue working with people um, just like we have been. We've been providing information to, you know, whether it's uh, MIT, FEMA, uh, still providing information to Morgan Stanley, and um, also the great work that we are doing now with you guys, which I'm super excited about, um, and the gift uh, that we are giving the free sonar license uh, for a limited time uh, that we're helping to provide. Um, just again, to, to put these tools of information in the people's hands who need them uh, during a really trying time. Yeah. Stephen, thank you so much for supporting this event, truckstop.com. It's right behind us. You believed in us converting this from being a live event to a digital virtual one. I hope we've made you proud. Thanks again, my friend. You absolutely have. You could never not make me proud, Tim. So I appreciate it. Tim, Michael, have a great day, guys. Thanks for yep. having me on. Look Thanks, Stephen. For that, for that gentleman right there. Yeah. Be well, my friend. Joshua McMahon, he said, a supply chain analyst, he said, is there an icebreaker tonight? I, I vote Dooner. Michael Vincent and Lance Healy have a jam session. Uh, oh, I'm going to be go. there. I know I will. After our last <laughs> session wraps, I'll be <laughs> popping up the icebreaker. I'll home bring, I have to I run know, home I, I Disco ball, I'd unicorns. What will be yeah, next? I'd have to run home and get my guitar. But. You'll have to tune in and find out. Yeah. You can play pot. You're a musician. You can play anything. Oh, yeah. Well, that's true. You can play the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, some other great stuff. Lance Hilly said, thanks, Emily. Great platform. Way to lead the way. We're going to go to commercial now. We'll be back with a whole other guest right here on What the Truck, coming to you from Freightways Live at home. As David Coverdale once sang, here we go again on our own.
<laughs> Me, you, 70,000 of uh, our, our favorite friends. streamers and some yes. amazing guests here on What the Truck. Absolutely. Another one is coming right up to bat. It's David Bell, co-founder of Lean Staffing Solutions. Very excited to bring him up here on the air. He's been a leader in the transportation industry for over 25 years, beginning all the way back in 1993. Hey, David, how are you? Hey, doing good, guys. How are you? Doing well. <laughs> Welcome, David. Thank you. Good to be here. So where are you calling in from, David? Uh, I'm actually in my office in Parkland, Florida. Ah, oh, ooh, uh, beautiful Parkland. Uh, I lived there. I lived there for about five years. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's especially beautiful today. We're yeah. uh, 70 degrees and it's uh, a good day to be in Florida. Yeah. Perfect. So David, what's the, uh, the most core aspect of your business during the coronavirus the, during this p- pandemic? What is, what is your, 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 you know, like I said, the core aspect of your business? You know, I mean, we're, you know, adopting this remote working, um, you know, it's a challenge for every business, but we've seemed to do well with it. And, um, we were able to transition, you know, over 1,300 employees uh, from offices in four different spots in Columbia to work from home. And we're getting a lot of productivity out of them working from home. You know, it seems like it's working well. Um, we're prepared to come back slowly and not like rush back into the office. And I don't think any of our clients are expecting us like to rush back and are in a hurry to get back either. Um, I think we've proven the model. Working remotely has always been a question of how to, you know, with companies in the U.S., how do they manage their satellite office in Columbia? Um, and working remotely, they always feel like they had to have it right there in front of them. And I think we've proven that people can work from home. And we're finding that KPIs and productivity is actually up because what else do they really have to do at home but, you know, bang out some work? So we're, uh, we, we feel we've done a good job and uh, successfully transitioned and adopted the work from home, remote working uh, mentality that may be with us for a while. My wife might crumble about that one. Working from home. <laughs> she, she, she wishes she could get the, uh, the work done. It, it's hard not to notice you being surrounded by greatness over there. On one shoulder, you got Jerry Rice. On the other, you got Michael Jordan. There's actually a fascinating documentary called The Last Dance that's out right now. Oh. Talking about how Phil Jackson, Jerry Krause putting together a great team. Your site reads the toughest, sing- the toughest single challenge in running your business is finding the right people, assembling that right team. So how do you folks go about doing that? Man, you know, I think that finding the best talent, and I think that that's one thing I've done well in my career is I'm, you know, I'm fascinated by special people and special talent and people that are blessed with just true, um, genuine talent. And, you know, the, you know, like you mentioned, the memorabilia behind me are special sports talent, but there's a lot of special talent, just people in general that can be applied to anything. And I've always just looked for that special talent, which is, you know, a combination of a bunch of things, desire being one of them. And if we, you can find that talent in any business, you know, that I think that's the key to building a successful business is, is getting the talent and the right talent. Um, and we've been able to do that with our clients. We find, that's what we do specialize in is finding that good talent and, and near shoring and, and, and delivering it. So it's definitely key. Very interesting. You know, when we talk about working from home and working, you talk about working, you know, what time zones you're in, that type of stuff. Are there advantages to being in central time zone? Oh, yeah. Huge, huge advantages. To, advantages over different different uh, types of call center and outsourcing. You know, we're when we launched this, we knew that outsourcing wasn't really conducive in transportation because you're, you know, the, the time difference and the language, you know, the language barriers and the accents. But, you know, Colombia is, uh, is closest uh, you know, culture to America um, and being in the central time zone is key because you're interacting daily and, and you're getting the best of the best talent that wants to work a day job versus going into other countries where you're getting the night ta- night job to work in the day while you're there. Um, you know, and most people want to be what, you know, want to have a normal lifestyle and don't want to work, uh, you know, night shift the, their entire career. So um, it's definitely key, especially in the DevOps, you know, at the Lean Tech, I run the CEO of Lean Tech and I run the tech side. Um, and the DevOps is even more important because you're really interacting like you know lean staffing they have a work they do they get it done and then they report back and they have kpis and they, you know so every day you can kind of measure the work they're doing but in devops like something happens you need to collaborate you got to get together with the team and quickly you can't afford to send an email wait till the next day they come in or have your cto staying up at one in the morning two in the morning trying to work with the you know the team on the devops side which is our Medellin office is uh you know lean tech so it's really important on the tech side that we're in a, we're in the same time zone as our clients in the U.S. 
David, sure. su supply chains have a diverse and seemingly endless uh, series of different needs. What is one of the more interesting staffing fulfillment projects or tech projects that your team has had to work on a, a demand by someone in, in supply chain? You know, I mean, right now with this, you know, with this happening, it's allowed businesses to take a step back and really focus on what, what do they want to accomplish during this opportunity to get a lot of things cleaned up, get a lot of projects done where they didn't have the bandwidth to complete them and stalling and other priorities. So we've seen an influx of tech work that has said, okay, here's the things we want to do. We've been wanting to do them. We can do them now. We got the time to dedicate. And uh, one of them is just, you know, the, the definitely the automation and, and the whole process of automation and, and and, you know, so we're trying to really get heavy into that. And, and, and you know, you had Alfonso was on the fireside chat yesterday and he, he, he delved into it quite a bit really well and did a great job of saying it's not just a, a one thing, RPA, let me automate this. It's about setting a, you know, a, an automation plan for your business and an automation strategy over the next six months to 18 months and where you want to be and then collaborating on our staffing side. So our staffers are also trained in the automation and what they can do to do it better because it's a collaboration. It's not just a build a bot, do it, and now it's perfect and, and it makes my business better. It's in complete team collaboration. And so what we're really focused on is bringing that collaboration together, uh, both, both human and artificial intelligence and getting the blend of the best efficiencies and, and product. So that's interesting. Companies that are that are coming into and utilizing your services can be uh, assured that you know when they bring in these automation and these new technologies, you guys are going to, you guys are going out and training your people to make sure that that they're up to speed with what that company is doing. Yeah, correct. And you know, I think that's key because like any software implementation and onboarding and teaching, you know, transportation's a lot of, you know, old dogs, you got to teach new tricks and there's a lot of <laughs> up and coming, but it's still, you know, I like you said again, I'm 25 years into this, so I'm one of those old dogs and there these are all new tricks we're learning and and making sure that we can onboard it and get collectively the entire teams working together and you know not have people saying it doesn't work. It's, you know, it's going you still got to talk to the customer. They want to hear my voice and just the different, you know, we can bring it all together and make it everybody everybody work together to transition it and and benefit from it and there's definite benefits from it hey diana guzman in our slack channel from aptitude she said love that you mentioned the last dance sooner and it tied and tied it to the right team the chicago bulls of the 90s are by far imo the greatest team in basketball history you're gonna agree with her david man i don't want to get into that debate that's uh you know i i you know, I look, like I said, I look for the greatness and there's greatness. You know, you look at any of the teams, <laughs> you know, there's definite greatness. And back in that era, you know, the Knicks and the Pistons and you watch this documentary and, you know, I see people that I know in, in some of the audiences and there and I, you know, I pause it and I'm like, oh my God, look, he's there at the game. And, and, you know, you look back, you know, 20, 30 years. And, and so I, I'm not going to, you know, I'd, I'm a fan of greatness in general, and I don't like to just say anybody's the greatest. I think, uh, I think greatness is a tough thing to measure against other people is, is different aspects of greatness. All right. You, you should get into politics, David. <laughs> that, was a, yeah. that was a very judicious answer. <laughs> yeah, you, let, let's well, send some well, people your way. It's all over, so I've got to be careful. I, let's send some people you. your way. You have lean staffing and you have lean tech. How do people go and reach out and learn more? Uh, yeah, go to uh, leanstaffing.com um, to learn about lean staffing. There's links in there to click to get to lean tech also. Or you can go to lean-tech, T-E-C-H, uh, dot I-O. Um, you could email david at leanstaffing.com. Uh, um, go on our website, and there's the, we're really easy. We're all over LinkedIn. We're all over Slack. All our sales reps are on Slack, and we've been participating in the event, which has been great. And, uh, you know, everybody's making the best of it, I think. And, you know, there's definitely going to be some virtual stuff that's going to, you know, be a stronghold in the future. You guys have done a great job. Thank you for doing it. No, thank you. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you for your support of not just What the Truck, but Freight Waves in this event. We, we all appreciate it greatly. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. Oh, great. Thanks, guys. Stay safe. Be well. Matt, Matt Beckham, Client Success Manager in Optum, he said, uh, Florida represented. You know what? There has been a lot of representation from the Sunshine State. There here. has. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. And Heather Sells says, shout out to the team. Thanks for having us on What the Truck today. Feel free to connect with Steven. I highly recommend Steven is a great guy to uh, to connect with on oh, there. Yeah. Ricky Gonzalez is saying, go Hub Tech, automate that. <laughs> Hunter Bell from Lean Staffing, feel free to come to their Slack channel and chat. Highly recommend it. Make those connections and network here. And also jump into the Linked Up channel. Drop your LinkedIn link in there. We'll be back after the break with more What the Truck.
Yeah, here for another round of interviews. We're going to have Very Derek nice. Dunker, AVP Operations at Triumph Pay On. He is Kansas City Jayhawk graduate. He is a Jayhawk. Yeah, we were speaking about basketball earlier in the last dance. Some people, there used to be an argument between Jordan and Will Chamberlain. Well, Will Chamberlain, former Jayhawk. Paul no. Pierce, former Jayhawk. Derek Dunker, thank you for joining us on What the Truck today. You got it. What's up, gentlemen? Thanks for having me. <laughs> Did you hear that? So <laughs> we were talking about Wilt versus Jordan. You're a former Jayhawk. So is Wilt. Who you got? Ah, uh, I got Jordan, to be honest with you. I got. <laughs> oh. I, got <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Went against his alma mater. That's, yeah. That's, well, uh, I know. I know. It's tough. Whew, I don't know. Wilt the stilt. <laughs> He's pretty tough. He's pretty awesome. But hey, Derek, so coming from the financial, uh, bat with your financial background, what do you bring into the Triumph Pay already stellar team of the people there at Triumph Pay? Yeah, it, being the that best I, just I, getting I, better. <laughs> yeah, they just keep getting better, right? I mean, it, you know. Oh, yeah. I'm, I mean, I've only been here about two and a half weeks, and I'm already noticing. Um, but what I will say is, I bring, I bring the factoring aspect. So, I spent four years in factoring, um, and, and obviously we deal with a lot of factoring companies. I think what I can do, I, I know what it looks like on the factoring end of things. So when we're dealing with these factoring companies, I know how we can optimize efficiencies, trim the fat. You know, how can we get better? How can we better communicate with these factoring companies? What are they looking for? How can we, you know, make their lives easier um, and the carriers that they work with? Derek, you're coming into Triumph Pay at a, at a very unique time. You started in April during the middle of the COVID-19 yeah. pandemic. What's it like? What's it like integrating with the team like that, especially someone in your role? It's been interesting. I'll tell you what. Um, you know, working remotely and, and getting with the team. I mean, in my role, obviously, my job is to um, foster engagement with the group. Um, you know, drive efficiencies, make sure that you know everybody's working together in tandem to 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 move the needle. Um, so what I've been doing is just trying to trying to stay in touch as much as I can with my employees, checking in often and always, um, and, and you know trying to stay on video chat when I can so they can see my face. Um, but it's been interesting, I'll tell you what. So uh, Derek, the PPP loans, the uh, uh, Paycheck Protection Program loans, have you been involved in those at all? And what has that process been like? I have not been in, in, involved with that at all at this point in time. Oh, you haven't? Carly yeah. at Triumph Pay, she said she was really excited to introduce Derek Dunker to the Freightways community. He's been a great addition to the Triumph Pay team already. He's, uh, he's coming up next. He's here now. So what, what are you bringing to the table with you? What, you've seen ta Triumph Pay from afar. Now you've joined and integrated with the team. Where do you think that um, you can really bring some enhancements here? Oh, for sure. So, um, well, I think in terms of um, I, I, I come in and we're, we're growing, right? And there's obviously growing pains with that as far as um, a lot of manual processes. That's that's the first thing I've seen. Um, I think I, what I what I'd like to do is is automate a lot of those processes first and foremost. Um, and, and in in addition to that, with my factoring background, I've dealt with a lot of a lot of our customers. I've had dealings with them in the past, um, and so I'm familiar with their companies already. But what I want to do is be the constant, right? With growth, we're gonna at some point I'm assuming we'll get more employees on board. Uh, there's gonna be new faces, new names. And what I want to do is be the constant for our customers. Um, I want them to know I'm always there if they need uh, anything done for them. And even with new names coming on board, they'll always have me as, as kind of a, a backboard. So dealing with factoring, uh, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned that, and that speaks directly to the liquidity of the, of the carriers, the drivers, et cetera. And, and that was one of the things that Jordan talked about uh, was the importance oh, yeah. of liquidity. Do you have any take on that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think uh, more than ever, liquidity is going to be king. Um, obviously, in this new black swan event, it's going to be even more so. Um, going forward, I think what we can do, the thing that I that excites me about Triumph Pay, and I've, always, I've, I've known Triumph from afar for a while. Obviously, they have a factoring side um, as one of their subsidiaries. Being an operating subsidiary of a bank definitely makes us, I think, more dynamic, which excites me a lot uh, from a liquidity aspect. So, I think we'll be a huge player in this new market. Wow. Trey Griggs, he says, go Jayhawks. And he also said you made the right call with MJ. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> automate that. I don't I imagine if you could automate, uh, imagine if you could automate Michael Jordan. That would be fantastic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, so, you know what, the one topic of discussion that's, that's come up is, you know, payment terms, right? 30, 60, 90 days. Is there, is there any fear that you're hearing in the marketplace that people are going to be defaulting on any payment terms and what ramifications that would have on the supply chain? 
Yeah, so I think I haven't heard a lot about defaulting per se. Um, you know, terms are definitely extending to some degree. Um, I think, again, um, it just comes back to we need to make sure they're going to people are going to be worried about liquidity, continuing to be worried about liquidity um, with terms extending. Um, they're going to they're going to seek out cash today. You know, how can we get that done? Well, Triumph Pay is one way to get that done for, for your business. Um, I think quick pay adoption will, will increase uh, as a result um, because of the extended term. So uh, to answer your question, I haven't heard a lot about defaulting per se, but definitely there's going to be an extension of, of payment terms, I would assume, in a lot of, a lot of uh, situations. Yeah, I imagine that's going to have some pressure on it, though. You know, Craig called for some falling out of carriers in the first half of, of, of this year, and you're saying you're, you're really not seeing that right now, or, or are you? I, I haven't personally seen I mean, here's the deal. The, the spot freight market, um, it, the, the rates are ridiculously low right now. So you can't, these carriers can't keep the lights on with those low rates. They're having to sideline their equipment. Um, at some point, you know, some carriers are probably going to fall off. That's that's inevitable. Um, it's a, it's a very up and down market to begin with, you know, it's, and there's a lot of turnover in, in the carrier market to begin with. So with these new low rates, that's, that's going to be a thing. It's going to happen uh, inevitably. Carly at Triumph Pay, she says liquidity is king. And she gives the, the big hands up and George Abernathy, he says he couldn't agree more. And I, I would agree with you. I mean, who, who doesn't want to have a little stockpile of cash right now? You're in uncertain times. Yeah. I mean, now this emphasizes it, right? Yeah, I know. I want. I want some cash. <laughs> <laughs> Any other financial tips you'd get? You'd give to to the freightways community out here, people who are are wondering what, you know, what to look for in the next coming months here from a financial perspective. I'd say, to be honest, watch Jordan's fireside chat from yesterday. I think, um, you know, liqu- lack of liquidity is gonna gonna be what puts you out of business. Not uh, not operating uh, not operating expenses today. So. I think um, just make sure that you're planning ahead. You know, look what what are you gonna have? To, where are you gonna have to cut costs in the future to to keep the lights on? Make sure that you're gonna have liquidity in the future because once you can't pay the bills, it, the the music uh, the music stops, right? You're done. So just make sure you're planning ahead. That's that's the biggest thing I could say. And obviously, no one knows what's going to happen in this market um, going forward. It's just kind of up in the air. But if you if you're planning ahead, at least you'll have some sort of contingency plan if things go south. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Sounds Brad cool. at Transsex Solutions said it's crazy how much new tech has emerged in the past couple of years in the trucking space. Yeah, and you know, necessity, the mother of invention. We've talked about that numerous times on this on this very show. What the truck? We have. How do people reach out? How do they learn more about you? Network with you and learn more about Triumph Pay. Yeah. So you can always reach out to me directly via LinkedIn, uh, email. Go to triumphpay.com. Um, we have a. A new website, triumphmobileapp.com. Um, we got a lot of forums where you can you can learn more about us. Um, but definitely feel free to reach out to me directly, and and I'll do my very best. Even with my two and a half weeks of a uh, little bit, you know, drinking out of the firehose knowledge, I can probably um, you know fill you in. Thank thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Derek. Yeah, you got it. Thanks, gentlemen. Now, Michael, if you had to benchmark this event, what kind of score would you give it? Ben- the event, yeah. Oh, man, it, it's exceeded all my expectations. Yes. <laughs> I mean, what I've compared it against, I've been to a few virtual conferences, I, and, and the, this one versus the other ones has been quite a bit of difference. Um, not to really toot our own horns, though, because I really do want to stress that the best part of this has the, – this event's great. The production's great, but yeah. the Slack channel is really what is making this an actual oh. networking event feel incredibly immersive and feel like I'm really at a conference, and I'm love, I love hearing the feedback – from our audience here about how they're connecting, how many connections they made. Eric Surdy yesterday saying, I've made over 30 LinkedIn connections a day. Oh, yeah. Don't stop there. Throw your LinkedIn link into the Linked Up uh, channel over there. It's great stuff. When we come back, we'll be talking to our very own Chris Henry. He's the VP of Carrier Profitability for Freightways. He's also in charge of Freightways benchmarking efforts. See, there is a reason I brought that up. It's called a segue. <laughs> He'll That's be up with us after the break. Some more great commercials, some more things laid up on the schedule. Do not go anywhere. Do not change that dial. Keep that browser open. We'll be right back with you. Final segment of What the Truck at this event. Not our final segment, but our final 
what the truck. So excited to, uh, to to be here and to, to to join everybody. It's amazing how quick it's gone by. It, it has flown by. It, it really has flown because it's action packed and there's so much to absorb and the networking while you're watching content. It's unbelievable. Well, hey, we still got another guest and we're going north of the border for this one. His yeah. name is Chris Henry, our very own VP of Carrier Profitability, and he's also in charge of Freightways benchmarking efforts. And Michael Vincent, I think he might have. Uh, some, something special to bring to us today, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I teased it a little bit earlier in the week. Just wait till we show you on Thursday, and this is it. Here it is. It's coming up right now. So, you Are know, you here, Chris? We'd Chris love to there? talk to you. Hey, Chris. I, I, I'm here. Nice. Get Warm it up, yellow. Chris. Where, yeah. uh, where are you joining us from up in Canada? Uh, London, Ontario. We're halfway between Detroit and Toronto. Beautiful. Oh, London, Ontario. Beautiful, Chris. So, Chris, let's start off with this. What the heck is benchmarking? So benchmarking, very simply, is compar- comparison. So comparing with like people or like companies, and that's what I do 100% of my time is get communities of people together that are similar and allow them to compare and contrast their operational and financial performance. Yeah. And Chris, can you tell us about the uh, Sonar 6.0 released on, on Tuesday? Huge, huge event, huge fanfare, and there's, uh, there's some new features in there, some new solutions. Can you, uh, can you get into that? Yeah, so uh, for a long time, I've been working on the carrier side with a uh, platform called Engage, which is also now embedded into Sonar. And we've recently just launched a new benchmarking app that's going to be available to those participants that want to get involved in this new benchmarking for uh, for brokerage and non-asset brokers. So. so why brokerage specifically? You've had a lot of success with, with truckloads. Why, why brokerage specifically? Well, we've actually had some uh, experience on the brokerage side with a, a group of about 20 uh, brokerage operators over the last uh, year and a half. And based on demand, uh, we wanted to further engage that community, build more metrics specific to that community. Uh, obviously, you guys know there's a different focus. So, um, yeah, so that's, it's, it's been bas- basically uh, customer demand asking for this. Oh, we got a couple comments here, too. Jordan Kidd, IT and data analysis at Freightworks. He says, uh, if Chris Henry is talking, you should be listening, getting that What the Truck channel. Highly recommend it. Uh, Paul Case said he loved that Warm It Up Chris reference. And it's also a callback to last night if you were at Icebreakers presented by Load Shore, where <laughs> Trey Griggs did a nice dance to Chris Cross. His uh, <laughs> hit song, Jump. <laughs> All right, That's what else awesome. you guys so, yeah. hey, so, hey, Chris, so Chris, I can, I can pull up uh, the benchmarking feature in 6.0 right here if you want to take us through it, and I'll drive the bus. that sound good with for you? For sure. All right. Absolutely. Can we, bring up the, can we bring up the screen for everybody? Nice. Well, now we're going to take a look at Sonar's benchmarking. There we go. So it's in the apps over here under benchmarking, right on the left-hand side in this menu. So let me click Correct. on that and bring this open here. There we go. All right. So, so uh, yeah, it's not visible to me, but what what I uh, what I can describe is uh, the first page you'll see is, is kind of the the snapshot view. So it's a custom dashboard that allows users to see very quickly how they're performing versus the peer group that they want to compare against. So they can use geography, they can use revenue size, operating mode within the brokerage uh, app to slice and dice their anonymous and aggregated peer group. So uh, what what Vincent has on his screen is that custom dashboard. So right now there's about 60 metrics, all standard and normalized, uh, that uh, uh, brokerage operators can choose from. And this gives a real quick overview of how you're doing versus your peers. Left-hand value on each gauge is the worst performer in the peer group. Right-hand value is the top performer. And your result, and that's a key point, your result is the one in the middle. So in addition to getting involved in the program and and participating in it, you have to be willing to contribute your data in order to uh, participate. So without your data, you don't get the benchmark. So it's definitely a table stake. Otherwise, people would just want to retreat so this is a snapshot overview, but you can dive deeper if you hover over each gauge and you can see your individual results um, uh, within each month captured. So gauges show a rolling six-month average. And then likewise, if you click on the little line chart 
icon uh, on the left-hand side, you can look at whatever interval of time for every KPI that we have in our system. So right now, there's 19 uh, volunteer uh, submitters in our uh, peer group on the benchmarking side, and that's going to continue to grow. Our goal is to have 200 uh, people in this new community uh, by the end of this year. So I'm uh, really excited about this. We have a great uh, process of getting your data lined up and submitted um, and mapped uh, to our common data set. Uh, so I think it's a great complementary tool for Sonar and also to capture another audience, which is the CFO and controller roles within each brokerage. You know, I used to work for a 4PO, Vincent, and one of our core businesses was uh, doing doing benchmarks. And um, and it was amazing the amount of savings you would get when you had yeah. when you'd done proper carrier vetting, carrier vetting, and all yeah. of that stuff. You started back in 2014, Chris. Why have you made credible benchmarking and trucking uh, of data? Why why is that so important to you? Uh, well, the the key thing that bench the key thing that benchmarking does, it eliminates status quo. So if you're a, a carrier and you've never done benchmarking before, you're simply just relying on your own data and, and maybe some public company data. So you don't really have any legitimate scorecards to understand how you're doing versus your peers. And this is what we've done with the TCA profitability program. And that's what we're trying to do with this brokerage community as well. Uh, we want to focus on brokerage operators that have a long-term focus and want to succeed. Uh, and we think we have a great tool uh, for them to do so with. I would say that you do there, Chris, because you talk about benchmarking and it's incredibly important. It's it's important not only to you know see how you're performing, but to, to get a confirm positives and to eliminate false negatives in business performance. How are you doing against your peers? And and this benchmarking platform is highly configurable to however you want to do it, right? You could take out outliers or change who you're comparing against, et cetera, once you're in this platform, right? Absolutely. And, and that's good. That's a very key point. The peer group, which is entirely Entirely anonymous and aggregated will grow over time, and that will allow us to add more and more filters, just like we've done on the carrier side. So you can get super specific on who you're comparing to, just not seeing the names of the companies that are submitting their data. That's a key part of of keeping this uh, uh, this uh, program intact and growing. Chris, this is wicked exciting stuff. How does the viewer get How does the viewer get involved and, and learn more? Uh, yeah, if you if you have a contact with Freightways um, on the sales side or customer success side, just ask to uh, uh, to get a, set, a demo set up. We also set up a Slack channel uh, in the Freightways Live instance. You can uh, get in touch with us there or see Henry at Freightways.com. Thank you so much for joining us today, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, guys. Take care. A little dedication for the audience. A little cowbell. For everyone who gave this event a chance, Amen. a lot of deserving praise has been foisted on freight waves, on production, on us up here, on content people, all the background stuff. But none of that matters. None of that matters if nobody shows up. If you build it and they don't come, you wasted a lot of effort. But people turned out in droves. So thank you all, especially the ones who joined on the Slack channel, have joined in on that community, are interacting, are leveraging that like you should, or depositing your LinkedIn links, or, are able to still do business despite there being a pandemic, because the supply chain knows how to do anything. It's how to persevere. And it's an honor to have all of you a part of my network, Freightways Network, and the Dudes Network. I couldn't have said it better myself, Dooner. It's been a pleasure. It's been awesome. It's been better than I expected. And I know the turnout has been unbelievable. And everybody here is very thankful for everybody that gave this a chance that's continued the energy throughout these three days. We've got more coming up, though, Dooner. Yeah, we do. Stay tuned for more demos, more sessions, and the dude and I will bring it all home at the end where you can catch me and him in the icebreaker session presented by Loadshore. Talked right. about warming up, Chris. I think Snap, <laughs> the power by Snap, will be, uh, we'll be bringing it out. <laughs> Boom. Thank you for joining us. Peace.